coming up on TBG. And it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again mm. like I never mm. did what mm. I just did. And I'm just tired. tired. Yeah. I'm tired. And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the f am I doing? I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. Inequality is devastating and it's extreme. And when people said, Monique, do you think calling a boycott was extreme? You damn right. But isn't inequality extreme? So we've got to get to a place where we're unafraid to say it out loud. Monique may have gone about this all wrong, but she wasn't wrong. Hello, everybody. My name is Rogan, and this is This Bahamian Gal. On my platform, I do social commentary and reaction videos. I encourage my audience to have those private conversations in public. So let's get started. So Oscar-nominated actress Taraji P. Henson is trending in entertainment news because of some comments that she made regarding the pay disparity between black actresses and their white counterparts. Well, Taraji, who is in the latest Color Purple film, is doing promotion, and she was on Gail King's podcast on Sirius FM. And she broke down crying because she was talking about the pay gap that exists between black and white actresses. One of the things that really resonated with me was Taraji talking about having been in the game for a long time, having been in the industry for a long time, and still having to negotiate as if she's starting from day one. And I heard on the street, Taraji, you had the audacity to say you're thinking about getting, stopping acting. We said, stop talking. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? Um... Mm. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sisters say the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yes. Well, have to. Mm -hmm. The math ain't mathing. Mm -hmm. And when you start working a lot, you know, you have a team. Mm -hmm. Big bills come with what we do. Yes. We don't do this alone. The mm -hmm. fact that we're up is a whole entire team behind yes, us. Right. Yes. They have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million. No, that's not that. That didn't make it to their account. Mm -hmm. Know that off the top, mm -hmm. Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have 5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting off of what you grossed, Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. Mm. So I just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm only human and, and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again mm. like I never mm. did what mm. I just did and I'm mm. just tired. tired. Mm. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. It wears on you, you know? Because mm -hmm. what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is that telling me? What is it telling me? Yeah. And what does it tell me? Mm. Yeah. You know? And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the f am I doing? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. no, don't apologize. <laughs> don't apologize. I, I think it's an important message for people to hear because we see the lights, camera, action. Yep, yep, and yep. then and they tell so me glamorous. we don't yes. translate overseas. Yeah. 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 I'm tired of hearing that my entire career, 20 plus years in the game, and I hear the same thing, and I see what you do for another production, and when it's time for us to go to bed, you don't have any money. Mm. They play in your face. Mm. And I'm just mm. supposed to smile and grin and bear it and just keep, like, mm. enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I have other things. I have my TPH brand. I have my mental wellness. I have other things because... This industry, if you let it, whew, it'll steal your soul. Yeah. But I refuse to let that happen. Yeah. There's so much to unpack from that video. First of all, I happen to be a fan of Taraji P. Henson's. I love her. I just love her. I don't know. I just love the essence of her. She just seems like such a nice person. I watch her interviews all the time, and she seems like she's really one of those people. She doesn't strike me as a hater. She seems like she's always rooting for someone. She doesn't care who they are, black, white, um, um, brown. She doesn't care. Like She will root for you. Like Everybody is her sister. Everybody is her brother. And so I do love that about her. And so that really did touch me um, to the point that I said, I didn't even have plans to do a video today. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this video because we need to have this conversation. Listening to Taraji P. Henson break down the numbers, right? 
right? And she didn't go all the way in depth, but she gave you sort of an understanding of where the money goes beyond Uncle Sam. And it really reminded me of years ago, if you all remember TLC, um, when Left Eye said, this is how a, a, you know, a multi-platinum album uh, selling group can go broke or can go bankrupt because they were having financial problems and you just automatically thought they're just spending so much money. And then you realize, no, it's just so many people who have to take their cut that it's hard to make money. And that's in the entertain that's in the music business. Let's talk about the, the, the acting side of it. And it's, it's just crazy to hear her say, you know, it's almost as if every time I sit down and um, have to, you know, basically audition for a job or get a job, it's like none of the stuff that I did before mattered. It didn't matter that I had um, awards, I was nominated for awards or people thought I was critically acclaimed. None of that matters. You're still, again, back to being this black girl um, in Hollywood singing for your supper almost. And it is just incredibly sad because what message does it send to up and coming actors or people who aren't so young who want to break into the business they think well you know what what is there for me if someone like Taraji who's been around for so long um, is still not even making the kind of money that she deserves um, just so you know Angela Bassett is now the highest black actress um, highest earning black actress for like television she's making four hundred and fifty thousand dollars per episode now, for a lot of you, and, and definitely for me, I'm like, whoa, 450K, that's almost half a million dollars per episode. That's a really good salary. Sure. But let's juxtapose that with someone like a Jennifer Aniston, who in the 90s on Friends was making $1 million per episode. So Jennifer in the 90s was making more than twice the amount that um, Angela Bassett is making in 2023 more than twice. And today in 2023, um, Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon are making $2 million for that um, streaming show that they do. Liars. I can't remember the name of it, um, but they're making $2 million. So more than four times the amount of money that uh, Angela Bassett is making. So there, there, there are clear disparities. Black actresses just aren't making the kind of money that their white counterparts are making. And a lot of them are only making money later on in their career, like a Viola Davis. It's like you rarely see, unless we're talking about like a Zendaya, you rarely see like a black ingenue who's just killing it the way that you would see someone like Jennifer Lawrence um, or one of those other actresses coming up in their 20s and making that kind of bank. They just don't make it. And I remember Monique, and Monique got a lot of flack um, about her approach to talking about these uh pay disparities. Uh, you know, she famously feuded with, it was mostly a one-sided feud because Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry and Lee Daniels weren't going back and forth with her, but um, she feuded over the fact that they wanted her, and these were black producers, to uh, promote Precious, which she got um, Oscar nominated and she won an Oscar for, wanted her to promote Precious uh, for free of charge, even though she wasn't really even making money off of the film. The film wasn't like a high budget film. And Monique famously said no. And I did not blame her for saying no because you're already not paying a lot. And now you want the artist to incur the costs of of paying for their promote to, to promote the film. That means they have to get makeup done. They have to get nails done. They have to get clothing done uh, by clothing. They have to have stylists. They have to have all these things to look nice on the red carpet or to look nice uh, in interviews. It's just not fix your own hair, fix your makeup and just walk out on the carpet. I mean, you could do it if you're super talented, but it's, it's, it's a cost factor and they didn't want to pay. I never disagreed with the fact that she said no. I did disagree with the way she went about it. Um, and we'll get more into Monique because there were a lot of truths that she said over the years. Again, it was just her approach. You know, people, when you, when you come with profanity laced, uh, comments, particularly in your stand up routine on stage and in interviews, you know, it dilutes the message that you're sending. Um, but for Taraji, I think Taraji has been out since 1997, um, uh, acting in, in move, TV shows and then movies subsequently. Um, and it, it's painful to watch someone like her 
and the Gabrielle unions and all these other talents just not make the kind of money that their peers are making. Um, and what's happened is uh, a lot of them have had to open up or, or start their own brands. Like Gabby has her own like hair care brand. Um, Taraji has her own hair care brand. You even see Tracy Ellis Ross with her own hair care brand because the money is just not coming from Hollywood the way it ought to. And I think that is something that definitely needs to be addressed. How it needs to be addressed, I don't know. I really don't know because I feel like it's going to have to take extreme measures, but also I think uh, we need to be focusing on as black talent on black entertainers is really ownership. I remember, and I have this book and I didn't, um, I didn't mark it right, but I bought this book. This is a, a book on Oprah Winfrey quotes. And I love books on quotes because um, they're just so, I mean, it's, it's great education. And she was just talking about wanting to do the color purple. It's so funny because I just bought this book a couple days ago. Uh, she was talking about wanting to do the color purple in the 80s. And she was working as a reporter at the time and they didn't they didn't want to give her the time to, to do it. And um, she said, or she was, I think she had started her show. And, and she said that, you know, that was really the impetus, the catalyst for her to say, you know what, whatever I do, I need to own. I need to have ownership so that I can call the shots. I can do what I need to do. And I think a lot of actors in Hollywood, particularly black actresses, really need to be leaning towards ownership, not just having their hair care lines and, and their clothing lines or whatever. That's wonderful. But if acting is your passion, then they need to be focused on owning things. Look at someone like a, a Shonda Rhimes, how she owns her own uh, production company and she's producing so much content. She could write roles for herself if she's so desired, but she's putting people in, in business. Uh, look at someone like a Issa Rae. Issa can sit down and write her own scripts for herself, which she has done, and she's now developing other talent, you know? Um, and Tyler Perry, a wonderful example of someone who said, I'm going to do this myself. He now owns um, one of the largest studios in, in the United States, I believe, in in terms of square square for acreage or whatever um but you have to have some ownership taraji and so many people like her gabrielle union lupita nyongo um so i don't know if zoe considers herself zoe saldana considers herself black or not but you know you know enough people where you can come together and really do some amazing things uh, and so I think there needs to be some consideration to that. One of my first thoughts was maybe they should strike because look what happened when the writers um, uh, engaged in that strike and the actors and then they they, they got somewhere. Um, I, I, I don't know. You know, they just came off a strike. A lot of people were hurting during that strike. So I, I doubt that that's something they're going to be rushing into. But Hollywood needs black talent. It needs black talent. And I think we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Um, what's also crazy to me is that I think black actors in Hollywood and actresses also have to understand that a lot of what they do is just so, um, there's a lot of stereotypical roles that they're filling. On one hand, I'm like, try to break outside the box, expand a little bit more. So you don't just be doing these same roles of either you're a slave or you're, um, you know, it's a, like a hood drama or there's some comedy, like what else is there? There's so much more to do. I remember watching um, Whoopi Goldberg in an interview talking about in the 80s when uh, Steven Spielberg came around and he wanted to develop Alice Walker's book, The Color Purple. And people were criticizing her and criticizing all the other black talent that were inside that film because they were like, oh, y'all working for this white guy. And she was like, well, what's stopping you, John Singleton and, and whomever else from, from buying the rights to the book and producing it? Nothing. So don't sit back and complain when somebody else does it. Just just do it yourself. And that way you can keep it in black hands. Um, but I think that there needs to be greater co collaboration between the black talent. Everybody in there is so talented. Taraji is so gifted. And I'm sure she knows a lot of people where you can do your own thing. You can own your own studio. You can own your own production company. Drew Barrymore has her own production company. Reese Witherspoon has her own production company. Jennifer Aniston has her own production company. But it's 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 just really really tough, um, and this is not something that is unique just to black actresses. Like we see, or I don't know if you guys have seen, but Terrence Howard, who played alongside Taraji in Empire, is now suing his 
agency, his talent agency, because he felt that they were not negotiating in good faith. And they were basically just taking any offer that came across their table to give to him rather than pushing for more money. Terrence is really talented. He's a really good actor, so he should be making much more money. Here at five, actor Terrence Howard has announced a civil suit against Creative Artists Agency, claiming the agency failed to get the actor the proper compensation for his work on the hit TV series Empire. Lawyers for Terrence Howard say that his CAA agents tricked Howard into believing he was being paid a fair salary for his work on the show. Mr. Howard was unaware that his self-dealing agents were providing him information that was just simply inaccurate. When he would ask them, please provide me with the comparisons so that I know exactly what compensation I should be receiving, they'd give him comparisons that simply were not accurate, were misleading. Monique has become sort of a pariah in Hollywood because she stood up to some very powerful people, her words and mine. Uh, when she said that she would not promote Precious free of charge. She wasn't making much money from the film and they wanted her to promote it. And she said in an interview that Tyler Perry had come to her and tell her, listen, you're probably gonna get nominated for this Oscar and your career is gonna take off. You should really just consider doing this. And she was like, no, well, you know, I need to get paid for it. Why don't you reach in your pocket, Tyler Perry, and pay me for it? And Tyler told her, according to her, I don't believe in giving away money for free. And she immediately countered, well, I don't work Work for free and I thought that was a wonderful response how can you look at someone and say oh no I don't I don't believe in giving away money for free but then you expect for them to work for free no it doesn't it doesn't work that way I think it would have been a bad look for somebody as meaningful in the film as Monique was to not um, be on the promotion circuit but make the concessions give her the money I can guarantee you that Brad Pitt those who are taking their huge payday and Julia Roberts and Jennifer Aniston, those ain't just promoting for free. Either their money is built into their salary and they're like, listen, this is what the 30 million you're gonna get is going to entail and we need you to do, to do promotion. Or they're gonna say, well, this is what you're gonna get and this is what we're gonna pay for promotion for your costs. But we, again, expect black people, and this is black people as well, expect black people to just do it for free. Just do it because, no, it's a business. And so I totally agreed with her. And you know, Monique also famously feuded with Netflix because she felt she wasn't getting, a, a, she felt she was getting a raw deal when it came to her Netflix stand-up special and she sued and I think they quietly settled. Um, which again, a lot of people thought she was just making a big, you know, big deal about it. And someone has to be the one to stand up. Again, I didn't agree with the way she did it in some instances, but I did agree with what she was saying. It always takes one person to say, no, this is not gonna fly. And then you know what happens? Everyone benefits from that one person standing up. So why won't two people stand up, three people, a thousand people, more people need to stand up and speak out and keep talking. Don't just let it be a one-off thing. Just keep talking about this until there is some substantial change. I also think that black actresses need to go out of their way to not be pigeonholed. And, and I know it's easier said than done. I really know it's easier said than done. Um, because when you are an actor and you seek to make money from it, it's only so many roles that are being written for black actors, um, particularly black actresses. And it's like, if you don't take it to Raji, I know who'll take it, Gabby. Gabrielle Union will take it. If Gabrielle doesn't take it, Tracy Ellis Ross will take it. So someone's gonna take it, so do you want it or not? And I think that's where you need to have an alliance with other actresses where we'd be like, nope, we're not, we're not moving. We're not doing this. We're not. It's just that so many black actresses are typecast. They're pigeonholed and through no fault of their own sometimes because I can just hear the casting agents. All right, guys, we need a strong black woman for this film. Someone who is strong. The audience can connect to her strength. Very powerful indeed. What do we got on the list? What about... Viola Davis. I mean, strong, black, and she's dark skin. All right, Viola it is. Definitely, I'm, I'm writing that down. Viola. Viola. So now we're casting for this hood film. We're going to need some around the way sisters. Who we got? Oh, Taraji. Oh, definitely. Or Vivica Fox. <gasps> Taraji and Vivica Fox. And get you some Vivica. Vivica, good one. Write that one down, Sheila. Yes. Sisterhood around the way, girls. Yes. All right. So we need a leading lady for Brad Pitt. Someone who is 
outwardly urban, but inwardly suburban. Who we got? Not Hallie. We need someone a little darker. Come on. Gabby. Gabrielle Union. Gabby? Yeah. She has that black thing, but she has that not so black thing. She is very suburban inside, but urban outside. Let's get her on the phone. Not too much money. All right, I think we got our leads. Good job, guys. Give yourselves a round of applause. Let me give you the top 10 highest paid actresses in 2023. I was looking for this because I wanted you to see, you know, like who's on it and what kind of money they're making. But these are the, the 10 highest paid actresses in 2023. Coming in at number one, Scarlett Johansson with $56 million. Angelina Jolie with $48 million. Jennifer Aniston with $45 million. Jennifer Lawrence, you heard me mention her earlier, $43 million. Reese Witherspoon, $35 million. Nicole Kidman, $34 million. Charlize Theron, $31 million million gal gadot um 31 million number nine margot robbie who had great success with the barbie film this year 26 million and melissa mccarthy rounding out the top 10 at 25 million dollars not one black woman on there we won't talk about gender inequality of pay because a lot of the women who've stepped forward and i stand in solidarity with them okay what they're getting paid which is half of what a man is getting paid well we get probably a tenth of what a caucasian woman gets and I'm number one on the call sheet. And then I have to go in and I have to hustle for my worth. That's what I feel like I'm doing. When I demand what I feel, listen, I have a, more than a 30 year professional career. I, have, I had a friend who said, yeah, but Viola, your career is better than my career. I said, yeah, but you can't compare me to you. Because once again, I got the Oscar, I got the Emmy, I got the two Tonys, I've done Broadway, I've done off-Broadway, I've done TV, I've done film, I've done all of it. I have a career that's probably comparable to Meryl Streep, Julianne Moore, let's Sigourney Weaver, they all came out of Yale, they came out of Juilliard, they came out of NYU, they had the same path as me, and yet I am nowhere near them. Not as far as money, not as, as far as job opportunities, nowhere close to it. And yet, I have to constantly get on that phone, and I have fabulous agents, by the way, they, they are getting it. But I have to get on that phone and people say, you're a black Meryl Streep. <laughs> you are, and we love you. We love you. There is no one like you. Okay, then if there's no one like me, you think I'm that, you pay me what I'm worth. You give me what I'm worth. Ooh, I mean, she nailed that one. She killed that one. I, let me also go on record to say what something I hate. I hate when someone says, this person is the black so-and-so. This person is the black Jack Nicholson. This person is the black, like, can I just be myself? And I understand that they're trying to say, man, your talent is comparable, but I don't want to be the black anything. I just want to be me. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, I'm not the black anything. Oh, this person is the black Jennifer Aniston, like, come on. I, I don't want to be the black anything. This woman is one of the most talented, gifted actors I've seen in a very, very long time. Um, and yet, listen to her. All these awards. And she still has to, her agents still have to beg for her to get her due. This should be like, oh my God, Viola. Okay, what does she want? What does she want? Tell us what she wants. And we're going to get it you know, um, but that's not the reality for her. There's this thought process in Hollywood that black films and black actresses just don't translate well overseas. They don't do well. And there have been a lot of movies that have surprised, black movies that have surprised Hollywood. I remember even reading about Michael Bay. You guys know him. He um, directed Bad Boys when Will Smith and um, Martin Lawrence were involved. And Hollywood was stenching on the movie because they didn't feel as if it was going to do well. And Michael famously spoke out against it. And he said, um, Sony didn't believe in the movie because two black actors don't sell overseas. Because that's what they said. They had no faith in it. I was watching James Cameron's True Lies and I'm like, oh my God, this guy has so much money. I have only $9 million and they shut me down. Literally, they shut the power off. That's how rude they were on this movie. And it's crazy because what if this guy hadn't pushed to get Will and Martin, you know, on the big screen? We wouldn't have had Bad Boys. I think Bad Boys has like three films now. Um, and 
so you and they defied expectations now it's like a, a big movie to do a bad boys film is big you know it's going to bring people to the theater i also want to say one of the things that's always bothered me is that even with and i feel like the black actors in hollywood the men fare much better than the women not i just feel i mean there's evidence of that but uh you know a lot of times we'll see a denzel washington or a will smith and, or jamie fox and they're paired alongside white actresses which i have no issue with them being paired side anyone but why is it that we don't see it's almost like the norm to see denzel washington with uh, a white or let me just say a non-black actress why aren't we seeing you know more pairings with like the nia longs or the uh the um the gabrielle unions or whomever right we just don't or, or or the taraji p hensons or the tracy ellis rosses why aren't we seeing more unknown actresses people who we don't know because it doesn't have to just be those regular faces that we see in hollywood it can be an, an unknown and i just feel like they don't i don't know i just feel no i do know i just feel like they, they don't think that's as marketable it's more marketable to have a black leading actor with a non-black woman cast alongside him and I think there is some responsibility too, like when you when you reach a certain level to say, no, I would like for so-and-so, let's audition these five black actresses to be like my leading lady. How about that? You have clout, you have push, push for it. You don't have to do it in every scenario, but my God, push for it. Like use your influence to do so. I remember Octavia, uh, what's her name, Octavia Spencer? Is that her name? She's Oscar winner. She wasn't making any money alongside her co-star Jessica Chastain. So Jessica Chastain used her clout, her influence to get uh, Octavia more money and got her five times the amount that she was being offered. So sometimes you have to step up and say, hey, this 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 is not fair. Like, there's no way I'm, I'm alongside this person who's super talented and I'm not, and if I could do something, I'm gonna do it, right? So I think that needs to happen a little bit more. So let me just jump right to my question of the day and I'm gonna split this in two. Um, for my black audience, please weigh in, please weigh in. And let me know what you think black actresses need to be doing in Hollywood right now to secure equal pay to their white counterparts and for my white audience. And please know that this is a no judgment zone. If I'm asking you for your opinion, I genuinely want your opinion and I want the truth. So please answer this as truthfully as possible. Are you at all interested in seeing black actresses on the small screen and on the big screen? Yes or no? If yes, have you, do you support black films? Do you support films that have black um, leading ladies inside of it? If no, what is it that's holding you back from watching these leading ladies on TV? So please weigh in both of you. And of course, um, if you're Hispanic or you're Asian, I wanna get your take as well. Um, I really should have said for the black audience, that was my first question. And for the second part of my question, I should have said non-black. That's what I should have said because I want everybody else to weigh in. Uh, so non-black um, audience, please weigh in on the second one. I love you guys. You. I love engaging with you. I can't get to everybody, but I try to get to as many as I can. I'm just one person. Um, but thank you so much for your support. I'm almost at 50,000 subscribers, so I can't wait to hit, hit that milestone and beyond. I can't wait to get to 100,000 minimum. Minimum. So thank you so much, and I will see you all next week. Love you. Bye.